Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial. So what I'm going to be showing you in today's video is how you can start a download from within a user's browser without contacting a server. So to begin this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create a download out of this bit of text here. So you can download it as a text file. And in a second example, I'll show you how you can download a CSV file. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to create a new link element. You may have one in your HTML markup already, I don't. So I'm going to create one here in JavaScript. So I use the create element method and the type is A. And I just store a reference to that because I will be modifying that. Now the next thing you want to do is to place the data that you want to be downloaded in a file container. Now the file container you use is called blob. So to create a new instance of a blob object, so a data container, you write new blob. And then as a first argument, you place the file in an array. And in the second position, you create an object. And inside here, you can specify some options, the most important of which is the type. So what you need to enter here is a mime type. So if you're not familiar with those, those are things like text forward slash plain, text forward slash CSV. You can also have application JSON. So I did go online before this video and look up MIME types. So if you go to MDN Web Docs, they have the most common MIME types available for you there. So the one we'll be using is text plain for this text. Another very general one is this application forward slash octet stream which is a sort of generic unknown file type. You can also have things like audio, MP3, image, JPEG, things like that. We'll be using a little later on. So what you want to do is work out what type of data you're sending and then enter the appropriate MIME type. So in this case, it's going to be text plain. So that's going to store text data inside the blob, which is the data container and I'll save a reference to that. Now the next thing I want to do is to create a link to this data container I've created. Now because a blob is a widely supported format, what you can do is pass this into a method available on URL on the window object and that's going to be create object URL. So just pass in your blob in there with your file and create a reference to it. So I'm going to call that URL. What you need to do with that is use the URL you've just created to set the href attribute of the link element we created earlier. So a href is going to be the URL. And you also want to set the download attribute on the link element. And this is going to be the name of the file that the name under which the user will download it. So in this case, I just call it testfile.txt and make sure you include the correct extension. Now that's most of the hard work done. What you now need to do is to append the link element to the DOM, simulate a click on it, and then remove it from the DOM. So we start by saying document.body Dot append. I'm appending the link that I created. And if you don't want the user to see it, then you should also apply the style display to set that to a value of none. Now that the element is in the DOM, you can simulate a click on it, which will initiate the download. And then afterwards, you may want to remove that from the DOM. And then and the final thing you'll want to do is to actually remove the URL from browser memory. So you can do that by calling window.url.revoke object URL. And you pass in the, a reference to it. So in this case, it's URL. Now, the reason you do this is because as long as the URL exists, the file also has to exist in memory. So by deleting the URL, you're also deleting the file in memory. Now this is quite a small file, so it's not taking up too much memory, but if it was a very large file, 
it would really be advisable to delete it. So it's a good practice if you're done with the URL to use revoke object URL. So let's test it out now. Hopefully when I refresh the browser page now, the download will start. So refresh and you can see in the bottom left hand corner test file.txt and it contains the text data that was in JavaScript. So that's how you create a download. Now what I'm going to show you is how you would do it for a CSV file and also make this functionality reusable by placing it all inside a function. So what I'm going to do is create a new function here and I'll call this function start download. And I'm going to place all of this functionality here inside the function. And I just clear it up a bit. And I'm going to want to pass in three bits of information to the function. Um, the first one is the file type or the mime. The second one is the data that I want to make available for download. And the file one, final one is file name. So I'm going to replace the mime that I hard coded here with file type. I'm going to replace the data here. So this was text data before. Now it's uh, corresponding to the parameter data. And I replace the hard coded file name with file name. Now I can call this function start download and I need to pass in the three bits of information to it. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use a different data type this time. So I'll be using this array, which I'm going to turn into CSV text format. So, so the way that you can get this text from this format to CSV is to call map. So we're going to be iterating through each one of the items in this array. So that's each row. And so I'll call the parameter row and I'm going to want to join the items inside each row and I'm going to join them with a comma. So we're going to end up, if I just ran this on its own, we'd end up with four strings in the end, each in its own array, but there wouldn't be individual items. There would just be one item in each array. And then I want to join the result of that. And I join that by a line break. And that will then be in CSV format. So I'll just save that under CSV data and log that to the console so you can see it before the download starts. So if I open here, you can see, so each line, each of the items is separated by a comma and each line is separated by a line break. So that is in CSV format. Now we have the data available. So I'm going to call the start download function. And what I want to do first of all is pass in the file type. So this is text CSV is the mime for CSV. The data is CSV data. And finally for the item name, so I'll call this test CSV dot CSV. Okay, so now when I refresh the browser, this should start now as a download. So you see here test CSV dot CSV. And I just need to configure that. And now you can see in my standard um, CSV reader, that I have the data available to me in the spreadsheet. So that is how you can create a file download in the browser using JavaScript. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.